guys, I'm Sherry coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Glad to have you here talking a little bit of Raid with me. Today, we're going to go ahead and take a look at my best dungeon uh, hard team. So, it's a stage 10 of all the hard dungeons. I've been getting a lot of requests throughout the last few months here. Ash, show us your Spider 10 team. Show us your Fire Knight 10 team. Show us your Ice Goal. Okay, nobody asked about Ice Golem. No one cares about Ice Golem. <laughs> Honestly, do any of you guys run Ice Golem when there's not a tournament or a fragment summon or something like a reason to do so? Do you guys go after the gear there? I think there's, you know, just to look at it really quickly. You know what? Let's start with Ice Golem. Don't mess with the bull, young man. You'll get the horns. No, 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 no. I'll lose all my viewers if I start with Ice Golem. <laughs> look at the artifacts here. Life, offense, defense, crit rate, resistance, retaliation, reflex, curse, provoke. I have to be real. Reflex and Provoke are really, really good sets, like end game sets. So I think that there is a reason to farm Ice Golem. Uh, I know a lot of people throw tons of shade at spending any, any energy ever in Ice Golem's Peak, but I definitely think those two sets, Reflex and Provoke, are really, really good. And some other sets, you know, like Crit Rate, Life, Defense, Resistance, Retaliation, they can have some like niche uses or just help you out if you get like good gear in a two-piece set. But otherwise, again, Reflex and Provoke, hey, it's definitely worth farming there. But let's start with Spider's Den, guys. Why not? Because it's the fastest team, right? I'm gonna try to give shout outs to the first place that I saw some of these teams, or at least the concepts. I don't know if you guys are anything like me, but what I tend to do is I go to Boss Guide and I look at Teams of the Week. I actually think that Teams of the Week is really, really cool. And I don't necessarily just copy a team. Once in a while, I will. But sometimes I just look for inspiration. You know, okay, what champions are they using? Blah, blah, blah. One thing I will say, just apropos of nothing is, and I, I want to, if you guys, have you guys thought about this as well? But I would like to see my clanmates, just like Doom Tower. I kind of want to see best times like every season. They'd have to add seasons or whatever. Uh, but I would like to see best times in uh, the teams of all of my clan mates in all the dungeons as well. Furthermore, I would like to see my live arena rankings in my clan rankings as well, like how all my clan mates are doing because I'm a competitive SOB and I like kind of competing amongst my clan mates, especially Harrier, man. So I'm gonna try to give you, you know, where I first got my inspiration for these teams as well. And this one's gonna be easy. I got the inspiration, AKA I straight up copied Cold Brew. I love Cold Brew, I love his content. And uh, he was using this team for a 10 second Spider 10 run. And I was like, dude, I can make that team. Now the cool thing is, is he was using two cold hearts, right? He had two versions, one with two cold hearts, one with Acrisia. So I was like, well, I'll use Acrisia because I have her, but having two cold hearts is, is, is great as well. It works. And Tamisia is not mandatory at all, right? All you need is an HP burner to go first, right? That's all you need. So I have Tamisia here, but you could use really any burner. He was using Walking Tomb Drang on his team. Uh, and then we have the brand new Artak, who everybody watching this has, unless you're watching a year from now, I'm sorry about that. Who everybody watching this has. And then we have Sissia. So the idea here on this team setup, really quickly, I'm gonna show you all the team setups as we go along. So for Sissia, she's opening up with her Flame Eruption. She's The sets don't matter here in terms of what type of artifacts are on them, just the stats. So speed 259, most importantly, we want her to be going after the burner goes. So the burner goes first to place the burns, and then Sissia and Artak, uh, you know, combust them or, or make them trigger, instantly activate, I think is the verbiage. So 259 speed, pretty fast, and enough accuracy to actually land the burns. To me, she is at 264. She is the fastest on the team. Maybe Coldheart faster, but that's not imperative to have her faster. Uh, so she's going to go first. She's going to go in with her HP burn. Acrisia is at 244 speed. We want at a bare minimum 243 speed on all these champions so they get lapped by the spider. So Battlefield Domination, a two-time hitter, 
big big damage sounds good uh our attack is going to be going in with dogs of war he's at 252 speed survivability not important here in this particular dungeon and this particular run and then we have cold heart uh using heart seeker at 267 speed but again having her that fast is not going to be mandatory here so again just to, to take a look here we're prioritizing a2 prioritizing a2 uh Acrisia a2 our attack a2 and cold heart a3 there we go guys pretty simple in terms of the team setup and what we're trying to do it's not rocket science here we are let me make myself a little bit smaller going in with that heart seeker here comes the hp burn there comes the first activation here comes the second activation and then a crazy comes in and, and finishes it off 13 seconds there we go not too shabby huh not too shabby you know what there's something satisfying at least with me about a fast dungeon run let's watch it again just for the heck of it. Now, keep in mind, guys, if you don't know this already, that dog of war, you know, that that's a visual glitch on his HP. Uh, he doesn't really have one HP on our attack. And there we go. Battlefield nomination. Now, if you didn't have a Crisia, again, absolutely no worries here because you see how much HP is left on the spider at the end. Another cold heart using heart seeker could do. Look at that. Let's make a little visual note there. That much that much hp left right so exactly enough for another heart seeker to come in there and finish off the job and that was what like as i mentioned that was what cold brew was doing on his run so really love this team super fast uh spider 10 there we go all right let's go to fire knight i think fire knight 10 is the most difficult dungeon in raid shadow legends bar none nothing is close to fire knight 10 nothing is close uh, therefore, this is going to be the most endgame content that I share with you guys, so I apologize in advance. Hello. What is going on <laughs> with these Hello. artifacts coming out of my inbox? Literally, I cleared them an hour ago. Hello there. What is going on here? Anybody else getting that visual bug? What is going on here, man? Hello. Stop it! Stop it! Make Hello. it stop! Hello. All right, guys. Let's go to the team set up here. Are you really going to spam Hello. me? Is it going to spam me the whole time? This is ridiculous, dude. Hello there. Be right back. So the good news here is I forgot where I first found inspiration for this team. I tried so many variations of a team. Then I tried to min-max it to get it as fast as possible. So the good news here, guys, is that I am using a team with speeds way faster than they need to be. Okay, so that's the good news. Uh, the bad news is, you know what, actually, I was going to say the bad news is I forgot the exact speeds that you do need in terms of the lower thresholds. I actually think that Scratch AK-47 has a team very similar to this, if not the same. Uh, so I'll include that video if I can find it in the show notes below. But essentially, we have Cardial. Cardial around well, at 333 speed. Woof! Round one, there. Round two, not using Angel Song, open up with Heavenly Host just to get that round to go a little bit faster and then not using it again. Uh, a lot of people just shut off the Heavenly Host, but it takes so long to use it that we're able to reduce that cooldown again and have it available in round three, uh, where we open with the Angel Song. We want to open with the Block D bus because we can't take that decrease speed, etc. from the Fire Knight. So we open up with the Angel Song and then we uh, first priority after that is going to be the Ally Attack Heavenly Host. On Valkyrie, it's the same type of deal. We're going to open up with stand firm on the second wave first wave doesn't mean nothing nothing matters second wave we're going to open up then not use it again and then we're going to open it up with it again uh and i do have valkyrie in a reflex set on this build 290 speed on valkyrie tomb lord we have him on round one opening with blight his debuffer opening up with blight again the debuffer ability and then we're not going to be using blight because we do want to be landing hits uh and there's no actual hit on that shield on the a3 we are going to open with crippling blows to get a, a triple hitter on to that fire knight the reason tomb lord is so great is twofold now uh, against fire knight hard and fire knight in general right is number one is we're gonna get the uh, triple hitter on his a1 he has phantom touch as well all these champions have phantom touch if i do have yeah i do i have blessings on everybody everybody has phantom touch for that extra hit on the shield right uh but the decrease speed plus the ally attacker on that a1 is going to allow us to land decrease speed and usually keep it up more often than not against the fire knight which is instrumental for success the other reason he's so good though is all those poisons right going to help us get through those waves with his a2 and his a3 and the poisons against the fire knight if we can land them are going to make things go a lot faster all right foley was the last addition to this team previous to foley i was running theodore the savant Previous to Theodore the Savant, I was running Kertraxa. Previous to Kertraxa, I was running 
Who the heck was I? Acrisia. None of them have had success on my account, at least, like Foley. Now, Foley is super, super endgame, guys. He is fully awakened, plus four empowered. But the most important thing about Foley is, is that, you know, he just does his quadruple hits as fast as possible, right? So that's the cool thing about him is that we don't need him to be as OP as he is. We do not want to use Sealed Fate on the third wave. But the, other than that, it's a quadruple hitter with decreased defense and a quadruple hitter with Leech. He's going to be our debuffer essentially against the Fire Knight. Plus, again, he's fully awakened with Phantom Touch, extra hits. Sign me up. Cold Heart. Uh, round three, she's not going to be using her Art of Pain ability, uh, but again, a quadruple hitter and heal reduction on that A1, just an absolutely essential, probably one of the best. Can we just stop and appreciate how legendary of a kit Cold Heart is that she's used in the most difficult dungeon inside the entire game? That's crazy as a rare champion, and I love it. Uh, nothing changed on round two, round or round one. 278 on the speed, so very fast. She does not need to be that fast. Uh, okay, let's go ahead. I showed you the team. I showed you the build. I showed you everything. Let's go ahead and see if we can get a pretty decent time here. There's quite a bit of RNG uh, with when we're landing the poisons and the shield and everything like that. Uh, in terms of artifact sets here again, again guys, I have... I have regen and immortal on uh, cardio because I had been using him in a different area of the game previously. I have reflex, as I mentioned, on Valkyrie. I just have regular old lethal gear or whatever I had on Foley. Uh, same thing with uh, Cold Heart. I have her in just like speed and, and whatever just to get that speed up. And then on Tomb Lord, I, again, I have regen and immortal as well. That's because I used him previously in other areas to kind of solo bosses back in level 25 dungeons like Ice Golem, etc. So anyway, he comes in there. You can see how important Tomb Lord is to this team, right? Comes in there, he's in charge of debuffing, he's in charge of poisons, DPS essentially, on these waves as well. As I mentioned, we're opening up with the A2 uh, and the A3 of Valkyrie and Cardio, respectively, just to help get some damage, but they get enough turns to get those uh, uh, skills off cooldown. Now, this round is a bit annoying, and if I could take down the clear time on the round two... I could really get into, I don't know, maybe world record territory with this team. Only problem is a little girl by the name of Riho Bonespear. She's a pain. You may have noticed the perfect body ability came in here, cleansed with a massive heal and block debuffs on the remaining alive allies. This is just eating up so much time. And this was the really nice thing about having Acrisia and Theodore the Savant in that role opposed to Foley. I love Foley and as I said, he was instrumental to bringing this run for me from a, I don't know, 75% win rate give or take to a 100% win rate. And I'd rather be winning than shaving off 30 seconds or a minute even of my time. So here we go against the Fire Knight. As I mentioned, we're leading off with the uh, the block debuffs from Cardio and the stand firm ability from uh, Valkyrie. So that way we can go right into the shield here with those counter attacks. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Fully getting that quadruple hitter. No big deal. Another quadruple hitter there from Cold Heart. We're going to get the shield down on this ally attack. We place the heal reduction vis-a-vis -vis the A1 of Cold Heart. Now it's not going to be a super fast run because ideally we're placing in a perfect world. We're also placing Foley's decreased defense right away. We do land it there, but ideally it's on that very first shot. But let's see how we do here. We do land the poisons, which is really nice. And there it goes. The shield is back down. Now, we want to have that counterattack up every single time before that shield goes down. So it didn't really work out that well there, but hopefully we get a reflex uh, proc here on Valkyrie. So the shield is down, Heartseeker goes down. That's again why we have uh, Miss Coltart on the team. We come in with all those A1s, we refresh all the debuffs. Very, very nice there. Now we get the counterattack. Now the counterattack is up when the shield goes down in the AoE. We're going to have the entire team be able to go in and get that shield up or down, excuse me, really, really quickly here. So check this out. Now we're going to deal some serious damage. Ideally, we take it down to like, you know, at least a quarter here on this run. And that is how important decrease speed is. 
even if you don't have Tomb Lord and you're struggling with Fire Knight uh, hard, especially, right? It's always a wise idea if you have like a Stagnite to put him on your team. Having, again, that decrease speed on the A1 big version is really instrumental. I cannot overstate enough how much of a factor having a 30% decrease speed is on these battles where Fire Knight, he's he's very fast. So the decrease speed is super, super important. Here comes the ally attack again. And it looks here, guys, like we only have one more rotation to go before we get this Fire Knight deado. So it's gonna be around four minutes and 30 seconds or so. I'm honestly unfamiliar with where the world record is right now. I know there's like a Discord server somewhere out there that keeps track of all these things. If you guys know, let me know in the comments below. But I do know, I, I know I'm not, I know A, I'm not like world record speed. And B, I do know that this is pretty dang fast run. 430, 437 here on Fire Knight 10. And we did pretty well here in terms of our run. It's that difficult of a dungeon. Uh, but anyway, you can see the damage here. You can see it's really about, you know, more so than the damage or any of the end stats. It's about just having the team functional together. All right, let's move on away from Fire Knight. And let's move to Dragon's Lair. And we're down we go. Or do Ice Golem last? Dragon Stage 10. Now this team is certainly not a world record beater or anything like that, so do not expect such, but it works and it's fast, right? And I think I mentioned to you guys before that the best part of this team, the biggest, most instrumental part of this team is Staltus Dragon Bane. Using his passive against the dragon, whenever an enemy attempts to place a weaken, decrease defense, or a poison debuff on this champion, reflex them back onto the attacker. That's so good to speed run against the dragon because he's placing all of those poisons on all of your champions all the time. It's reflecting them right back. Not to mention he deals de decent damage as well. Granted, Seer is doing all the heavy lifting in terms of damage for our team on the first two waves. So we have a Seer activation team and then Staltus really carries the brunt of the weight in terms of doing damage to the actual dragon. We have Duchess on the team only to activate Seer. For Duchess, even if you have like an Elva would be amazing because she's bringing the cleanse as well just to ensure that the team always stays alive but no worries with that, especially with Duchess on the team. None of these speeds are important here. We have a very slow and, and honestly a pretty crappy build here of uh, Staltus, but it still gets the job done. Uh, we have Seer, obviously prioritizing, opening everything, Karma Burn uh, on round one, on round two, on round three. I just left her as is. You can shut off the Karma Burn if you'd like. On Kaimar, obviously, we're not using Seal of Magic on the first wave. We're going to open it with it on the second wave. You don't need to do anything, but you can put it as first choice if you want to. First choice opener if you're going to be super... <laughs> Sometimes you get kind of... Uh, neurotic about even if it doesn't matter you just want to have it all set up on your team setups and then round three it doesn't matter what he's doing it's all good uh we have bad el kazar bad el kazar is great because you know obviously he can help out against the dragon right he can help out with the malice uh but the two continuous heals really do a great job at helping to activate Seer and making sure that Karma Burn works every single time, especially because we do not have a debuffer here on the team. You could run a Lydia instead of a Battle Kazar. That could be an option because you'd get those buffs as well, and you'd still be able to get to the dragon just fine. All right, guys, let's go ahead. And again, speed is not going to be super important here on really any of... I don't have it speed tuned other than making sure that Seer is obviously going to be going last after your buffers to activator so here we go guys pretty easy dungeon what teams do you use and how fast are they guys so here we go as i mentioned we have all these buffs and boom they're all gone and the same thing here all the buffs up all the buffs off so 14 seconds we get to the toxic dragon come in here and again you're, you're already noticing oh, we, we landed a, a smite there which is great just keep a look at all these or all these poisons, right? Instead of obviously landing them on our team, Staltus is going to reflect them right back. So every time the dragon uses the poison ability right there, it's going to go right back onto the dragon. And it's just, it's magic, right? That's it. <laughs> That's the whole strat, man. Now, I've come up with so many fun teams for Dragon 10, guys, uh, that this is not my favorite team, but it's the fastest team. I like running champions like King Galkabar, uh, like uh, Corvus, the Corruptor, like Knock the 
Paralyzer. I like those type of champions, but Staltis is an absolute monster, and it doesn't show up on the stat sheet again because it's all reflecting the Dragon's Poisons back on. It looks like Battle Kazar is doing all the heavy lifting here, which... You know, in some regards, he certainly is as well. So that's the Dragon team, around 50 seconds or so on that team. I'm sure I can min-max it for a little bit faster of a time there as well. If you have any ideas, let me know. Really quickly, I want to see the best teams in the world here. Uh, yeah, I don't even have one Calvalax, let alone three. So that's a bummer. <laughs> Can you feel my pain? Can you feel my You can see Staltis times two on some of these teams, again on some of these teams. So just clearly the best answer out there in terms of uh dragon 10 hard in my opinion uh, unless you have triple cavalaxes all right guys ice golem here we go I, and I don't I didn't get any inspiration from uh the dragon team so there's no shout outs to be had there uh other than maybe on the boss guide uh teams of the week or something like that so this one I do have a little bit of inspiration right I got the idea for using Elva from uh, Nubkex, from Nub Raids. Uh, he, I was using Wither, the crowned, and I put Elva in there instead, uh, you know, primarily for, well, she's just better, I feel like, in this dungeon, right? The heal reduction is a sneaky part that I under, or excuse me, the continuous heal that I really underestimated on this champion. Uh, this A1 plays a continuous heal buff for two turns on the alloy with the lowest HP. That ends up being crucial, not to mention, you know, her base stats are money. She's bringing increased speed as well, which is so important in this dungeon to keep walking Tomb Drain going faster and faster. So by far, once I at subtracted a uh, Wither and I added Elva instead, I was able to A, get this run to 100%, and B, B, make it a lot faster as well. Another change that I made was I took out Lydia. I forgot who Nub used. But I took out Lydia as a debuffer and I put Ghostborn in. Nice thing about Ghostborn is, is you're, you have a guaranteed decreased defense on the A3. And then you have decreased defense on the A1 as well. And then you have another AoE with heal reduction on the A2. Ghostborn is just one of those great debuffers out there in the game. Furthermore, you can build him for just DPS because of that unresistable A3. Uh, granted, you, you do want some accuracy for the heal reduction if you want it. And on the A1. Lastly, I put Ghostborn in a shield set that way we can activate uh seer okay so that's the team uh let me show you the team setup and the speeds really quickly here we have elva at 283 425 on the resist and as much hp and defense as i can muster up uh she is not using a2 and opening with a2 on the boss and on the A3, we're turning it off. We don't want her to revive like Seer. We just want her to go with more A1s for more continuous heals against the boss. This is important, right? Because I'm not going to lie to you guys. I just ran this team at first. I just copied the team and I didn't actually watch the video. I'm like, I'm just going to copy the team. And I, I put some substitutions in. Again, as I mentioned, Ghostborn and stuff like that. But then it wasn't, it wasn't working for me. And then I watched the actual video and he's like, yeah, you got to shut off that A3. You need, you need a lot of continuous heals off the A1. Now it makes sense. Kaimar is going to be really simple. The same thing on the SC, on a Seer Activation team, right? We're just not going to use the Seal of Magic uh, round one. Uh, we're not using Exalted Pyre on, on round one or uh, round two. That's the HP burn from Walking Tomb Drain. We want to make sure that's nice and fresh and ready to go to open up and set as a, a top priority on wave three. Uh, you don't want to shut off Death's Balance as well. He can save Elva with Death's Balance if she is in trouble. So that's important to have up. Uh, Ghostborn, nice and easy. Just prioritizing the a3 obviously seer the same thing prioritizing the a3 then not using it against the ice golem guys just really quickly before we go in i just want to show you walking tomb drang he is in regen and defiant that's defense plus 10 percent 15 percent less damage taken from aoe enemy attacks his masteries are going to be as so defense and offense i will note that a uh, bulwark is a mastery that uh that uh, nub went with when he was running walking tomb drang uh, I just came down here and grabbed a uh, War Master as well. Uh, we also have Elva. Those are her masteries. We went down and got resistance on her. We have triple speed on her as well. You guys can see. 
Uh, we have Ghostborn, as I mentioned, in a shield set. That's all we really care about, him being fast enough to land his debuffs before our nukers go. Seer, you can see I have her in Savage gear. These are her total stats here. 101 and 295 on the crit rate, crit damage with enough accuracy as well. Just to show you some other champions really quickly. Cardio, triple speed. We have Reflex on Valkyrie. Tomb Lord, as I mentioned, in Regen in Immortal. We have, let's see, Sissia is in triple percent. Perception. Coltar is in triple perception. Tamisha is in double perception in Cruel. And then we have Relentless on Acrisia. We have Artex still in a frenzy. I was showing what not to do in a video. We still have a minute. It's not helping him out at all. Just to be clear, just need to change uh, artifacts there. And then the other Coltar that we have is the fast Coltar with speed and crit damage on Spider. So those are all the champions that we used in today's video. Let me show you the masteries really quickly too. That's Cardial. Here is Valkyrie, here is Tomb Lord, and there is Coltart number one. Uh, you can see tankiness, right? Keeping her alive. This is the Coltart that it needs to be alive for the Fire Knight. Fire Knight Coltart. So you can see 45k, almost 3,000 on the defense. I even went down and went to the defense masteries, Iron Skin, just to make sure she stays alive. She's no good to you if she's dead. Especially for Fire Knight. Need to build a tanky before you think about damage on Cold Heart. Uh, I'm glad that I actually showed these builds because that's an important note there. Let's go ahead and watch this team in action so I can let you guys go. And the former hostages became free men and women again. So obviously the typical kind of Seer activation, nice and easy. Enough buffs from Elva and from... Uh, the shield set of Ghostborn to go ahead and breeze through these waves nice and easy here. Now... In this dungeon, we actually want Seer, Kaimar, and Ghostborn to die, and we want them to die pretty quickly. Uh, and this is why, you'll see why having that A3 uh, all on activated for Elva is a bad, bad thing. Reason being is because of her A1 again. We want that, A that, that continuous heal to be going off on her, to keep her alive every single time. If we have, see how Kaimar's getting the continuous heal right now? If he's stealing all these continuous heals throughout the entire duration of the battle, it's not gonna be good, man. Again, he's getting them all right now. Elva's gonna be going down, which is why we don't have the A3. You should just got the HP balance right now of Walking Tomb Dragon turned off because he needs to come in and spot heal for Elva sometimes, right? So Kaimar, will you die, please? If this was meant for me, forget what you've done for me here today okay finally he's dead and now you can see the continuous heals are going to start to rack up on elva autumnborn and that's exactly what we want here and you can see the retribution procking as well that's more continuous heals fantastic stuff right now we want to kind of pace ourselves too we really want to kill both of those minions so we don't have to deal with the big big smack of the ice golem because that can well ignore a lot of defense and absolutely murder us so we got one minion down that's going to be enough to keep the team alive but always going to be cognizant of that as well got the burn going got another counterattack. another continue see the counterattacks and the continuous heals you see what I'm talking about with the continuous heals on Elva, guys? How important that is? She, but between her passive and her continuous heals on the A1, I'm just stunned at how great of a healer she is. She's really, I have to be honest, guys. She's one champion. Maybe I'll cover her. Maybe I'll do a whole spotlight on Elva in an upcoming video. Because she's one champion that I was absolutely wrong on. I thought she was going to be, like, really good but not S tier. And I think she's really S tier. I think she's one of the best out there. Uh, anyway, guys, there it is. Two minutes and 23, 22 seconds. Not too shabby here. I just made this team in preparation for today's video. So who knows how close we can push that down to two minutes. Uh, but now a new best time at 222. And you can see Elva just racking up the heals at 1.2 mil. Uh, Dreng obviously carrying most of the damage against the, you know, the final stage. Seer before that. So guys, hopefully you've enjoyed all of these speed runs and uh, all these teams. Hopefully it's given you a little bit of inspiration to go ahead and fine tune or create a team uh, of, for yourselves as well. Even if you don't have all the champions, the strategy behind the thought process here behind some of these teams. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, take care, guys.